You're watching CT22 with Eric Parker. Welcome back this morning. We wrap up our conversations with the men and women who hope to serve Connecticut in the U.S. Congress in the new year. Today, we have two of those candidates who are running for re-election joining us. We'll be talking with 4th District Representative Jim Himes shortly. But right now, Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro of the 3rd District is joining us here in Studio A. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Wonderful to see you. So you've been in this role for a very long time. Yes. You're seeking yeah. another term. What mm -hmm. is it as you look ahead that you say, I need to stay in this role. The voters need me mm -hmm. here. First of all, I've been just honored to serve uh, as a congresswoman from the 3rd District of Connecticut. And I, you, you know, so grateful for the, uh, the folks who have, you know, felt that I was representing their interests and being an advocate for what they, for what they care about. Uh, I'm really uh, focused on the cost of living issues. People today are, are under assault. Working uh, families have not seen a raise in their wages in, in many, many, many years, and there's high prices, high taxes. And that, that's an area in which I want to try to focus my time. I have really spent a lot of time, uh, a, a matter of fact, 18 years to pass a child tax credit, uh, which has been one of the leading ways in which we can help to put money back into people's pockets. Uh, and uh, it is the largest tax cut uh, that working families, middle class families, uh, have had um, in, uh, oh my God, in recent history. Uh, and it has proved to be a godsend for people tr trying to uh, put food on the table, to pay their rent, to pay a mortgage payment, uh, for paying for their kids' uh, school supplies, uh, for child care. If you don't have child care, you can't go to work. Uh, so that is an area that I'm continue to focus on and and are very very proud of that effort uh, uh, also uh, in, in uh, w working to lower the costs which we've been doing through the inflation reduction act of health care costs prescription drug costs uh, making sure that the pharmaceutical companies uh, are uh, uh, negotiating the price of drugs uh, uh, today and we've done that uh, we initiated that for the first time uh, in, in history bringing the cost of energy down for people and most importantly a 15 percent tax on corporations who have not been paying tax at all I want to ask you a question I want to break down a lot of those individual things you sure. talked about and I will but I want to ask you something I asked Joe Courtney when he was on a few weeks ago mm -hmm. the land of steady habits uh, has been sending many of the same people back to mm -hmm. Congress over and over again and it's easy for any challenger to say well we need a change right it's mm -hmm. it's an easy mm -hmm. thing to campaign mm -hmm. on is someone's been in that seat for for three decades yeah. it's time for a change but from your perspective is there value like how if a voter came up to you and said Congresswoman Deloro I think it's just time for somebody new What's the value? I mean, you hold some pretty high-powered mm -hmm. positions that you've mm -hmm. risen to over time. What's kind of the give and take mm -hmm. of that, uh, what you've gained in that experience? Well, first of all, I think that, you know, with regard to people and their view of me, and, and, and I said, I'm a relentless fighter for uh, working people, for middle-class families. That's really the focus, uh, and what I do focuses and, re re uh, you know, revolves around uh, you know that effort and it's not a, so much about the time that you're spent but what you accomplish in that time and I couldn't be more proud of the record of again authoring the child a uh, tax credit of increasing the amount of funding for the low-income energy assistance program for bringing jobs back you know when when there was the move to outsource uh, the Marine One helicopter at Sikorsky I worked to bring that back save jobs uh, here in, uh, uh, in, in, in Connecticut uh, uh, and uh, so, and I was the first person to deal with increasing the funding in over 20 years for gun violence prevention research. So it is being able to accomplish all those efforts. And you know, you don't become chair of the Appropriations Committee by being there for two years, three years, or four years, uh, because you win the support confidence of your of your colleagues and elect you to that position. And in that. It's $1.3 trillion every single year to work on the issues that, and the challenges that people face in their lives. We did have your challenger, Leslie Denardis, on the program. Right. And one of the things she pointed to was the rising cost, something you just brought up, and inflation, mm -hmm. and many of the concerns overall with the Biden administration. And her point was, in the role as chair of the Appropriations Committee, you are uniquely situated to rein in that spending. And she feels that uh, with the prices going up, 
you're out of touch with the voters in the district and what they want. How do you respond to well, that? Well, I think I'm absolutely in touch with the voters in the district, the reason being, and you know, look, inflation is uh, uh, it's a global uh, uh, issue, and you've looked at a pandemic, you looked at the war in Ukraine, and you're looking at corporations who are price gouging. As a matter of fact, this morning, Shell talked about oil company, Shell Oil Company, four billion dollars in stock buybacks instead of lowering the price of gasoline and home heating oil, they're taking care of their stockholders. So I've addressed the issues of cost of living, again, child tax credit, increasing the opportunity for jobs, looking at trying to put money back in people's uh, pockets. But I would just say this. Um, the American Rescues Plan, should we not have done something to keep our schools open? Should we not have done given any help for small businesses, for restaurants, keeping them open? Should we not have done something for hospitals who are going under? What about the child care industry nearly collapsing in the face of the pandemic? What about vaccines getting shots in people's arms? That's what that was about. And now we are focused on, we, there needed to be an infusion so that we could get our economy back on track. But that's not where this ends. That's why I have been focused on bringing down costs and putting money in people's pockets now as a result of inflation. We only have about 30 seconds left. Sure. I want to give you a chance to make a pitch to voters in your district. Why should they reelect you? Uh, well, I hope they believe that I have been that relentless fighter uh, on, on, on their behalf. I've been honored and blessed to have the opportunity uh, to represent the people of the 3rd Congressional District. Um, and uh, I will continue uh, that effort. You know, my mom taught me many, many things, but two principles stand out for me always is don't take no for an answer and never give up. And I live by those principles, and it's all about my fight for working people and for middle-class families. All right, Rosa Delora, thank you for being with us here on CT22. We hope we'll see you back again. Thank you. Coming up next, the congressman from the 4th District, Representative Jim Himes, is joining us to talk about his plan if he wins an eighth term in office. We're back in two minutes.